I distinctly remember a not so distant version of myself that loved to wait. Patience is a virtue, but this was something completely different. This girl waited for opportunities that never came, so she waited longer, putting all of her trust in the empty promises made by imaginary people and scenarios in her mind about where her life will go. And coincidentally, it was always at the hands of someone else. She waited last minute for all of her assignments. She got by off of her wittiness and charm. She waited until September to get organized. She waited until January to make herself feel like all of her achievements just weren't enough. She waited for someone to validate her talent enough to really believe that it was there. And for all of the months she wasted creating false milestones, it revealed something deeper. That this girl never really cared until she had to care. And because this care was always out of desperation, always in a rush, nothing in a natural flow or a willingness to change, if she was really honest with herself, and if she could see her life from a bird's eye view, the path she sprinted on sporadically when shit hit the fan, when things got tough, when she needed to pull herself together, was an actual racetrack and not open terrain with the ability to take her somewhere. I think deep down she knew she wasn't going anywhere, but because she kept moving and having the endurance to stay on track took some level of discipline. She could escape accountability for her life, lie to herself about who she really was, and blame this man-made track on why she could never truly get to where she wanted to be in life. I don't think she ever trusted her discipline and endurance to show up for her in terrain that she could not predict. She was more comfortable in the longing than working to attain something tangible because working would require a level of faith that she just did not have. And all of that was fine for her up until the track she knew so well was set on fire and she has to choose to either burn out with the track or escape to uncharted territory that might actually take her somewhere maybe to a place she actually belonged. The first day of the rest of your life starts when you decide. And I know it sounds cliche, but I think humans have forgotten the amount of power that we hold to manifest. I think when we look outward into this large world and we see so many things happening outside of our control, we forget the very small but extremely important things that are actually inside of our control. And we have forgotten how to act on those things. I'm pretty sure the biggest and most important thing in your life that you wish to change starts with one small step. When people make an attempt to move mountains in their life, they don't do it by pushing the entire mountain in mass to get it to where they wanna go. They start piece by piece and eventually, and with time, the mountain is not as big as it used to be and you start to see yourself already on the other side. I'm making this video to remind you of the importance of every step and every day enough to get you to start now and start where you are. So instead of waiting for a new year, a change in weather, a change in the month or the season, make a change to do something different right now or tomorrow or like after you watch this video. Welcome to the Ron Hat Podcast where we get real and then some. I'm your host Jasmine Siri and every week I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. I'm at a time now where I measure my age by the level of consciousness that I am at at that specific time or the amount of times that I feel I've been reborn into a deeper understanding of love, faith, forgiveness, myself, and really my own internal power. But you can have all of these awakenings within the mind and still not necessarily be able to act on it or know what to do with it. Sometimes we're given an opportunity of a seed that we never sow to see the harvest of. We're just so caught up in the fact that we have it, we miss the opportunities to produce something with it. And for a very long time, that was me. I once embarrassed myself, I think spiritually, 
when there was a time that I knew what I was supposed to do finally, but I was so caught up in the encounter that gave me this awareness, this rebirth, that I didn't even do the work. And it just proved how despite my wanting and my longing for something, I was still unprepared and unready for this call that I had. And it showed me a lot about myself and where my maturity level was and just my laziness. This encounter that I speak of also came with a lot of insecurities about what to do next or being unworthy. So you don't really know what to do, you just freeze. So let me tell you, or I'll paint the picture. I used my notes on my phone to journal for a very long time, my inner thoughts, my innermost feelings. And after a while, I started to receive this inkling that I should be sharing them. But you just don't know if it's worthy or if it's enough or it's, if it sounds crazy. And one day, three years ago, I'll never forget, I was sitting at my dining table and I was on my laptop just writing and looking at different scripts that I had written in the past, wondering if I'm enough or if I actually am able to do the task of sharing myself with the world because it was just really at the forefront of my mind. And I guess I had been sitting there for so long that I started to feel this cool, like tingling down my spine. It wasn't pain. It just gave me the idea that maybe I should stand up and stretch. And I just remember gently arching my back with my chest to the ceiling and I could feel this cool tingling on my face now. And I'm just stuck there for, I don't even know how long, but this wind on my face face feels like euphoria and I just began like crying happy tears and it was just energy flowing through my mouth my face my eyes and it feels like pure love and I remember afterwards calling the closest person in my life at the time and talking about this experience and crying because it all seemed crazy this short little pocket of time that it meant so much to me after you feel you've encountered something that is a little bit more metaphysical you want to reach out to the people you trust to talk it through so you have some community and after all of that i was given this second wind right this breath of life and i still didn't act on what i knew deep down i was meant to do I was given this reassurance and this confidence that I still didn't think that I was worthy to have, so I didn't do anything with it. And I just like, I, I, it wasn't, it didn't feel right. I was stuck. So after that, even when I had set aside time for worship and devotion, I had the thing that I was asking and praying for and that really I had been waiting for for lifetimes and I still didn't make a move and it made me sick to my stomach. I was the deepest level of disappointed in myself that I could have ever been. I thought to myself like what is wrong with me? That moment, that special encounter that I had, it could have been given to anyone. How dare I miss my own opportunity by not taking it seriously enough? And just assuming that it happens to anyone, everyone, or scaring myself into believing that it wasn't real. My soul has probably experienced hundreds of lifetimes of being lost. And the moment I'm given a second wind, I freeze. Like, that rocked me internally. But it also got me up eventually. Because how many of us get the opportunity or have the talent and the gifts that we just sit in. You know, when our time is up, our time is up. And I struggle to forgive myself if the judgment at the end of my life is just a playback of all of the missed opportunities to use God's glory because I don't think I'm worthy of it. So in this energy of being reborn, you don't initially change because there are things that you are required to act on and those actions you take are the things that will change you eventually. And it helps clear the smoke you see. And it brings more light to the end of the tunnel. I realized the more I stood there and looked what was ahead of me, 
the more foggy and, you know, just uncertain it was, the minute I started taking steps forward, it didn't necessarily mean I had it all figured out, but it did look a lot clearer or had a better understanding of where I was going. I think this is the rawest truth about my productivity. Unfortunately, it's not as structured as people would think. You know, I didn't use a notion template or some special organization tool to get me to this productive version of myself. That's honestly not really me. I took one sloppy step in front of the other and the more times that I did it, the more my steps became refined. I didn't have structure in the beginning, honestly. Because of the way that my mind works and because I'm human and not a robot and I'm a little bit more artistic, spreadsheets don't make me feel confident. They just give me more things to do that distract me from doing the work that I actually need and want to do. And I have to say that because I know some people work in the same ways that I do, work better without the pressure of a linear route. Every time I have made a routine in the beginning and I'm good for a couple of weeks and I get off track, the disappointment from getting off track doesn't help me get back on track. I just slip further and further away from the structure. I think lack of structure does not stop me from being productive. I'm just one of those people that does things regardless. Doesn't matter how the week is going, I'm gonna do something. And this may seem like a maze for some, but I'm in complete control in my mind. So I guess that's all that matters. I'm just one of those people that has a little bit of chaos in the mind, but it's controlled chaos that I like to create through because it's kind of a full representation of how my life is. You know, my life is not a spreadsheet. My life is just a cluster of so many things, so many different tabs. And I want to let you know that you can be productive without all of the excess tools. Sometimes simplicity and a short circuit to produce the thing is needed for you to just simply start fresh. It's great to have the outside organization tools but are they required to do what you need to do? No. Were people doing the things that they needed to do long before those tools existed? Absolutely, and so can you. So just act. If I can take us back to just that imagery that I had in the very beginning of escaping this track that was set on fire to blaze a new trail, that's like starting the journey and then immediately building a boat because you think it will help you and it may be smart to do, but you're just wasting energy and daylight on a tool you may need, but you're just burning your energy and all you have to do is take a step forward. So if it's in your heart to write, just write. If it's in your heart to speak, start speaking and do it repeatedly and start where you are and allow that to be the engine that forces you towards this change, this better season in your life or this better version of yourself time always reveals that we have been waiting for ourselves this entire time there was never this gigantic event that has come into my life that made me move literally the holy ghost himself could come down and tell me what i need to do but it still wasn't enough i had to be at a point of awareness to see the truth of my abilities and make a change that is the common denominator every time to have the ability of sight over your circumstances enough to see when you're standing in your own way so if you know you are the catalyst why wait to make that reaction what does a change in a date or a change in the weather have to do with anything that has always solely been in your power to change anyway and when you answer that question for yourself, ask again, what can I do today that I was holding off for tomorrow? Why do I assume that I'm guaranteed another day? Starting this month, I'm doing this three win challenge so that every day I have a spiritual win, a physical win, and an emotional win. Every day I will read or listen to something that spiritually feeds me, something positive. 
I will move my body every day, even if it is a small stretch. And emotionally, I will do one thing that allows me to connect deeper within myself. And I'm still trying to define what those things are. And those things may be different or the same. I'm still trying to discover what it is I could possibly do. I don't know. What are some things that you can do for your three wins? A spiritual win, a physical win, and an emotional win. And I can add them to my list of things to do so I can just keep myself busy doing things that kind of like fill me up. I also have been getting like this little birdie in my brain that I should do a fast but I don't know necessarily what to fast and it's kind of like it's been knocking on my door for like so many weeks I've been called to fast called to fast and like I think I want to start this month so yeah I'm going to do some research and make sure that I do it healthily um and we'll just see where it goes but yeah, I think that is all that I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of my channel. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for making it to this far into the video. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri. Um, I love you guys so much. I hope to see you all in my next video.